Back in January, I got a chance to check out the new LG Gram line at CES 2018. I came away extremely impressed with its extremely thin and light design. 2.4 pounds for a 15 inch laptop really is unbelievable. So I took delivery of it about a week ago and I've been putting it through its paces ever since. Hey everybody, this is Andrew and this is my review of the LG Gram 15 here for 2018. Coming up. Whether you use an LG Gram 15 or whatever laptop you do use, you always need an ad blocker to get rid of intrusive pop-ups, banners, and other ads. Stop Ad is the most effective ad blocker on the market. Once installed on a laptop, it blocks all the ads on all major browsers and on social media websites including Facebook and more. And it gives you that privacy protection that you need, blocking ad trackers, data trackers, social media trackers, and more. It's available for Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can find out about Stop Ad. Right now, you can get the LG Gram 15 starting with its entry level model for $1,100 at Amazon. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can get one. Now, the highest end model comes in at a very expensive $2,000. We'll talk more about what you get for that $2,000 in just a moment. But you can configure it with a Core i5 8250U or the Core i7 8550U, 8 or 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and you can get storage options starting at 256 gigabytes all the way up to one terabyte of SSD storage. They decided to go with the M2 SATA 3, not the faster NVMe. And it shows with these read and write scores on the Crystal Disk Mark test. And they probably went with that slower M2 SATA 3 option to get better thermals. And speaking of thermals, it would start to thermal throttle at about 88 to 90 degrees centigrade, which is pretty good actually. The LG Gram 15 is easily the lightest 15-inch laptop I've ever handled. At a ridiculous 2.41 pounds or 1.095 kilograms, this thing is just super light. I can't believe this is a 15-inch laptop and it's this feather light. Now, as far as durability is concerned, it went through seven durability tests, at least according to LG, and it got a military standard grade of 810G. It went through shock, vibration, low pressure, dust, high temperatures, low temperatures, and salt fog, different durability tests, and it passed all of them according to LG. My take on it so far is that it is durable, but I'm not sure how durable it is. I would need to do a long-term testing, at least six months, to see how it will hold up. Having said that, this is extremely light, extremely thin, especially for a 15-inch laptop, and it seems durable enough for everyday riggers. Of course, time will tell if that is the case. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. Now, as far as ports, here's what you get. On the left side of the device, we'll start off with its DCN, a USB 3.0 Type A, full size HDMI, and a USB C port. Now, this will support data charge and display out, and you get Thunderbolt 3. Unfortunately, that's only on the highest end $2,000 model. Moving over to the right side of the device, you have a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Kinda wish it was a full size SD card slot, especially on a 15 inch model. A 3.5 millimeter headset jack, which worked well, no interference, no static, and that's good. You get two more USB 3.0 Type-A, and rounding it out is a Kensington lock port. All told, LG did a decent job with the ports, with the exception of the fact that you don't get Thunderbolt 3 on the lower models, only on the highest, priciest, $2,000 model. Now when it comes to the display, there's a couple of interesting options. It comes with a 15.6 inch either touch or non-touch display. I went with the touch display. It's a 15.6 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That comes out to 141 pixels per inch and it has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now the viewing angles were very good. I thought that the blacks were very deep and the colors were very vibrant. Now unfortunately you don't get a 4K option as you would get say with the Dell XPS 15. Now having said that, it covers the color gamut pretty well at 100% sRGB and 77% Adobe RGB. That's pretty good. And I thought the brightness was pretty good at 305 nits, making it good for both indoor and outdoor use. Although in direct sunlight, you will have some issues. 
I think LG did a decent job with the display, although I would have liked to have seen a 4K option, not something you can get right now. Now, the model I have has the Core i7-8550U CPU. That's an eighth generation Intel processor. It's a quad core processor and it performs pretty much like we'd expect it as we've seen this chip before in other models I've reviewed. And I have to say, there's nothing special about it as far as overclocking or anything to that effect, but it did perform as you'd expect that eighth generation CPU to perform. Unlike some other options in this 15 inch laptop category, you don't get a dedicated GPU like you'd get on say the Surface Book 2 or the Dell XPS 15. Those run say something like the GTX 1050 or the 1060 and not even the MX150 like you'd find in the HP Spectre X360 15 inch model. And you're not going to be doing AAA gamings played on their highest settings. That's not what this laptop is meant to be. This is an ultra portable, thin and light laptop that can do some gaming if you turn down the settings. But as far as a dedicated gaming unit, this is not it. Of course, if you do opt for that highest end model, the $2,000 model that supports Thunderbolt 3, you can attach an external GPU. And of course, then you can do your AAA gaming. But then again, what you sacrifice in certain power aspects, you gain in mobility and portability at 2.4 pounds. It's pretty incredible and an engineering feat to get a full laptop, a 15 inch laptop in this form factor. Now it has a 72 watt hour battery and that's a pretty nice size battery considering this is a very thin and light device. Now LG claims you're gonna get about 22 hours on their testing. I didn't get 22 hours, that's a little bit unrealistic, but I did get about 13 hours in what I call my normal use, doing YouTube, Netflix, some light gaming, some Photoshop, some web browsing under the Chrome browser, and some emails and everyday productivity. Again, I got about 13 hours, which is pretty good. And that's at about 50% screen brightness. And here's how it did against its competition. It certainly beat the Dell XPS 15, I think one of its chief competitors, and it beat the MacBook Pro as well. And to give you an idea just how good this battery life is for a 15 inch laptop, it even edged out the previous winner, the Surface Book 2 that I recently reviewed. Now the power button doubles as the fingerprint reader and actually worked well, setup was easy and registered my finger pretty much every time I used it. Great for logging in with Windows Hello. LG moved the webcam from the bottom of the display, which I thought was not a proper placement, to the top of the display for a much better result. Now let's see it in action. So this is the front-facing webcam on the LG Gram 15 here for 2018. It has a 720p, 30 frames per second camera on it. Uh, certainly would have preferred a 1080p webcam. Now it is a bit grainy. I'm not in the best conditions as far as lighting is concerned, so hence the graininess, but you be the judge. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this webcam on the LG Gram 15. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, I actually like it. It has about 1.2 millimeters of key travel. It's a quiet keyboard and it has two stage backlighting on it, making it great for use in a dimly lit environment. Now, one thing I had to get used to is the fact that it has a numeric keypad on it, which may be great for people who crunch numbers all day, but it did take a little bit of time to get adjusted to since everything is shifted over to the left. And I found myself hitting the minus button rather than the backspace button numerous times, although I did get used to it and it wasn't an issue after a day or so. I also like the touchpad. I thought it was nicely sized. It was very responsive. You can do your two finger scrolling and Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised. And as I mentioned earlier, I went with a touchscreen model and it was pretty responsive, pinch to zoom worked well, and really navigating the Windows 10 OS with your finger was okay. Now it doesn't support stylus, but again, you can use your finger. Now one thing to keep in mind, you will notice some screen wobble when you use your finger. Now, as far as audio is concerned, you get two bottom facing speakers and I thought the sound was very good on this device. There was some bass, the mid sounded very good and the volume was really loud. I thought overall LG did a very good job with the speakers, especially when you're talking about a thin and light device. That's not always an easy thing to do. I thought they did a good job on the sound. Now, if you like to go with the highest end model, the $2,000 model, you're looking at two 512 gigabyte SSDs inside. So you can swap one of them out or change them up if you'd like, that is upgradable. And if you get the lower end models, you'll have a spare slot for another secondary SSD. Now, as far as RAM is concerned, there are two slots which you can upgrade the RAM with. So that's good to know as far as upgradability is concerned. 
So to bring it all home, can I recommend the LG Gram 15 here for 2018? And the answer is absolutely, I can recommend it. I can't get over how thin and especially how light at 2.4 pounds this laptop is, especially for a 15 inch laptop. I like its display at 15.6 inch full HD display. Now you get a touch option, which I think is really nice. I like its superb battery life. It's one of the best in its category. And especially for a thin and light with all day battery life and then some, you're looking at some really good run times. Now, of course, this is not a perfect laptop and there are some issues with it. First one being there is some screen flex on it. The materials used are not the most durable, even though it went through so many durability tests. I'm not really convinced yet, at least not until I do some long term testing on just how well it will hold up. So far, it has held up, but I want to see after six months what the results are. Now, it can get expensive at $2,000. That model will give you that Thunderbolt 3 port, but unfortunately, you won't get the Thunderbolt 3 port in any of the lower models, even the mid-tier ones, which I think is a miss on their part. And I was getting some slow SATA 3 speeds. So the reads and the writes weren't the best, especially when you compare it to some of its competition, which uses NVMe, a much faster standard. But if you're in the market for a 15 inch laptop that's extremely portable and gives you excellent battery life, this is your ticket. I'm gonna give this an 87%, making the LG Gram 15 for 2018 worth your money. So what do you think about the LG Gram 15 here for 2018? I can't get over the fact that this is only 2.4 pounds. This is lighter than some 13 and 12 inch devices, believe it or not. At 15 inches, you get the screen real estate, great for productivity, great for when you're on the go, but you're not lugging around the heavy 15 inch laptop. This is extremely light and portable, obviously, and it's great for meetings and taking with you on the go. As far as that new material used, that carbon-based magnesium alloy, I can't give you an opinion one way or another how well it will hold up over time. I've only had it for about a week or so, and so far it's really holding up. And again, I understand they want to keep this extremely thin and light, so they went with a very light material. But as far as flex is concerned, you will see some of it, as you see here. And I don't know how well it's going to hold up over time. My guess it will. I know they did put it through those uh, different tests for as far as durability is concerned, and it supposedly passed. But again, that's exactly what LG is saying. I, I have to do my own testing on it. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, this thing is unbelievable. 13 plus hours on a 15 inch laptop is unheard of. And I know I said the same thing about the Surface Book 2. This actually gets better battery life than the Surface Book 2. And this only has the one battery, the 72 watt hour battery, and it's also much lighter than the Surface Book 2. So that's something to keep in mind. And as far as performance, again, I got the Core i7-8550U. Nothing special here as far as performance. It performs exactly as you'd expect that Core i7, eighth generation Intel processor to perform, and it did okay. Now there's no dedicated GPU, like you say you get in the Dell XPS 15, which was just announced with all new uh, GPUs and so forth. This doesn't have one. So as far as AAA gaming on full settings, this is not it, this is not your device. But if you elect to go for the $2,000 highest end model, you will get that Thunderbolt 3 support and you can attach an external GPU. That in that case scenario, you can do AAA gaming. But with this built-in graphics, the HD graphics, 620, I believe, it's not gonna do that. So don't, don't think this is gonna be a AAA gaming laptop. It's great for productivity, great for taking with you on the go, thin, extremely portable, and ex especially great with that battery life all day plus. So I'm curious to know what you think about the LG Gram 15. Are you thinking of getting one? Right now they're, they're on sale, you can get them on Amazon. I'll put my affiliate link below. If you choose to go through my link, you certainly help out our channel. And don't forget to check out Stop Ad, one of the safest ways to browse the web, protecting you from identity theft, protecting you from phishing scams, blocking those unwanted ads, making the online experience that much better. Check out the link below for Stop Ad and I thank them for sponsoring this video. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.